this workshop. Okay, so we've been doing that on Wednesday nights, and every time the Spirit of God leads, we've been going into deliverance. Okay, I want to bring two testimonies to you tonight that we got some on. We're going to have a big one. Uh, Dinka Davis is going to have, uh, and Susan going to have a big one coming up here a little bit. But this is Tiana. Tiana's going to come and she's going to share a uh, testimony. You've got a great. I have blood pressure it runs in my family, you know, all the females in my family have it or whatever. But I was only twenty, so I'm like, you know, I'm let's yeah, maybe later is. on in life I'm you know, I'm twenty. But actually it was one day when I was pregnant with Ayla and um I had been down to grab something. And when I stood back up, like I had got lightheaded and then like the vision like my vision had just like got static y like the static on the television or whatever. And it had lasted for maybe thirty seconds, but it was the scariest thirty seconds of my life or whatever. So then the next day I went to the hospital and then this lady told me that, you know, I had high, well, they diagnosed me with preeclampsia. And what that is, is like a, di- um, a disease that pregnant women get and it like higher their blood pressure. It makes them, basically it puts them in danger of having strokes and seizures and stuff. So um, anyway, I was like, yeah, you know, it was just crazy when they told me I had it. So they ended up keeping me for about a week and then they let me go. The next day I had came back for the same thing with high blood pressure. Wow. And so, um, yeah, and when I was in the hospital, my high, the regular is like one, 120 over 80. Yeah. Mine was 273 over wow. 172. Wow. So, um, yeah, and they put me in, um, they said it was high risk pregnancy. And so, anyway, I had her and I still was having high blood pressure. But they actually induced my labor thinking that that would help my high blood pressure. But even when after I had her, it just kept having the wow. same trouble. It kept spiking and going higher and higher. And maybe like a couple of Sundays ago, Pastor Bill, he had called out high blood pressure. And it, I, I got some real deep deliverance from it to the point. I never had to stand up during deliverance, but I had to stand up to get it out. Yeah. And he had um, bought a, um, a high blood pressure test. Thing. And the next day I had tested it, and it was normal. And every right. Sunday it's been like two, two weeks, two, three weeks, and it's been normal every Sunday. Yeah. say this because I want to I want to pass up the church up to go along. While see this is happening in our church. While Christian people, the heathen doesn't bother me. It's Christian folk think bad things about me, say bad things yeah. about me in this church in this meeting. If you come here they'll yeah. say bad things about you. <laughs> you be gone. Your pastor yeah. must be they a cult leader, yeah. they must yeah. be on yeah. some kind of cult. Yeah. But Jesus the healer the sick and the yes. yeah. okay? Yeah. 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 Now the reason I'm saying this is that leadership of this church has settled it. We're going on with God. Yeah. It's in the Bible. We're going to do it. Yes. You've got to decide for yourself. That's right. Because people, yes. if you yes. if you become a biblical yes. Christian, they will say yes. bad things yes. about you. Yep. So deal with your rejection. Deal with your fears now. Because the natural mind can't call the end things of the spirit. And then you're going to come and she's going to test Wow. Praise the Lord. I had headache all those days. I had headache, but it was like mild to moderate. But Wednesday, Wednesday it hit me so hard. I mean, so hard, <laughs> severely, like the migraine headache I was getting before uh, I had a breakthrough. So it hit me so hard, and I was so sick. I mean, the left side of my head was painful, very painful. My teeth were like. You know, like you have a toothache. Ooh. That's the way wow. that pain is. And then the neck was so stiff, I couldn't even turn. And then the, the head here was like someone is poking like needle in my head, on the left side of the head. So it was like that. I, I, you know, I, I was like that. And Pastor Brian had some work to do with Tiana, with her, her car and stuff like that. So... I was like that, and I took uh, Tylenol Codeine and something else. It didn't even work. Wow. Yeah, it did not even work. It's like maybe a half, an hour and a half, and the pain came back. <laughs> the pain came back, so it was bad. And then in the evening, we came here, and I was laying the whole service. I was back there laying down. Painful, very painful. So after Pastor Bill finished um, the service, he took me to the office and cast out some demons. 
Amen. And he did, and he called out, I mean, I gained a lot of ground. He called out the things that he needed to call out, and I was free. No pain at all. No pain. No pain at all. At all. At all. But the devil knows, knows, knows uh, the victory we have in Jesus Christ. So, well, as soon as we left here in the car, it started. You know, it was kind of like coming back. And I'm like, no. I was, you know, pushing it back with the word of God and Amen. stuff like that. And I went home. I slept. I had, I had during the night, but it wasn't very bad. And during the day, it hit me again so bad. And I knew that the devil's work is trying to ruin the testimony. Yes. He was trying to ruin the testimony. Yes. So Pastor Brian laid hands. He didn't even pray deliverance. He just laid hands and prayed. And he was gone completely. And I'm free in peace. Amen. Oh, you gonna praise. Oh, you gonna praise. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, so they come to their they're getting near to their major breakthrough that they've been that they've been working for the the to get there to cross uh, over Jordan. Okay, so Balak, the son of Zephor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Amorites are descendants resulted from Ammon, Ammon's incestuous relationship with his youngest daughter, and they often opposed Israel. Okay, so so that all that Israel had done to the Amorites, so, so this king of this Balak, this Moabite king, he sees that Israel's come, verse 3, and Moab was very afraid of the people of Israel because there were very many, and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Now the Moabites were distressed because of the children of Israel, and what we need to understand is that uh, Israel there, the, the, the people with the coming to God, that the enemy wants us to fear them, they're afraid of us. Amen. When you understand who we are in, in God. Okay, now they are distressed because the children of Israel, verse 4, and Moab said to, said to the elders of, of Midian, now shall this company lick up all that were round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zephor, the king of the Moabites, uh, at the, was king of the Moabites at that time. And he sent messengers. Now, here he is, and he's this Moabite king, and here comes the children of Israel. And so they, they heard what, what God did for the children of Israel to the Amorites. So now he's thinking, we're going to get well. Israel going to defeat us. So it begins. To, he gets. It becomes afraid. So it becomes. It begins to come up with a demonic, satanic strategy. The, how does this fit to us? We got to understand that here they are. They, they're wandered in the wilderness. They come out of Egypt after 400 years. They're wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, and here they are. The, the promised land is in sight. And now, what happens is there's a demonic, satanic strategy to try to kill them and destroy them. Mm -hmm. And, and you got to understand because you. You may be growing, you may have wandered in the wilderness, you made some wrong choices, and here you are, uh, you, you fought, you, you've done everything you can to, to keep your head above water, to walk in this, but to learn how to pray, to learn how to live holy, to, be, to submit to God, to resist temptation, and Satan then comes in with a demonic satanic strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, so now, what, what Balak does, in verse 5, he sends messengers, therefore, unto Balaam. Now, Balaam, his name means foreigner, not of the people. Now, just so, just for my conscience sake, let me just say this. That a whole lot of people take, say different things about Balaam. Some think he was a real prophet. Some think he was, he was a false prophet. God says he was not of my people. And uh, I'll say more about that. You decide for yourself, okay? And uh, I'm just going to say what the scripture says here. And in verse 5, so he sent messengers. Balaam sends messengers to Balaam. The son of Bego, of the Pathor, which is by the river of the land, but the children of Israel, they call him, say, Behold, there's a people that come out of Egypt. They've come out of Egypt. And remember now, Egypt is a type of the world. It speaks of bondage, okay? That's what it represents. Okay, so there's a people that come out of Egypt. Behold, there are, there are so many of them, they're coming to the earth, and they bite, they bite over against me. So, okay, now he's afraid, he's afraid of the children of Israel, so then he wants to come up with a demonic strategy. So basically what he's doing... He tried to he tried to contact a witch. He tried to he he, he contacts a soothsayer. Yeah. And some of the new divination. Now this is what he says in verse six. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, and curse me this people. Now you tell me what these laws are saying. Tell me if it's right with God or not right with God. Okay, so curse curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Provincial that I would prevail that we may spite them, that it may drive so so basically this Balaam has a reputation. He'll, he'll do things for people or he'll do things by, uh, against people. So he'll... Uh, and that's that's very common within, within the occultic thing, within witchcraft, is that there are different people they want favor, they got the enemy or something, and so they, they want to wipe out or kill this enemy or stop this faith. This enemy puts sickness upon them, and so that this person thinks that they're winning, and by the reality they're losing because they're contacting the demonic but just forbidden by God. Okay, so he contacts Balaam, and he's one Balaam to come and curse. That's, that's Balaam's reputation. Yeah. You call this guy up, he put a curse upon people. Wow. Okay, so here a nation of people, uh, the children of Israel come out, and remember now, Israel is the only people upon the face of the earth with the covenant of God. Yeah. So he's calling them, he's calling Balaam to curse all these people. And when you have to understand, some people think that, well, 
Now, the devil can't do anything. And there's people, there's a whole lot of people that died, okay? Now, yeah. That's true. So, all right. Smite them that I may drive them out of the land. I know not what the... I know... Now, this is what he said. I know that whom thou blessest, then blessed, and whom you curse, is cursed. Okay, so... Um, the Bible calls that, we'll, we'll define, we'll look at Soothsayer again in a little bit. Okay, now, verse 7. And the elders of, of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination. The rewards of divination in their hand. In other words, they got some money. Okay? Yeah. Now, we're going to say, I want, I want to, uh, well, let me, let me come to this right here. The old timers in ministry, when God was raising me up, the old timers would, would say this a lot. You don't hear, I don't hear a lot today, but the old timers would say the three of the main way, not the only way, but three of the main way that the powers of darkness, that the devil would get to God's people is by the three G's. Either the gold, which means the money, or the glory, touch God's glory, that we think God gives us anointing, that we think we're doing something, when in reality is, 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 the flesh problem is nothing, yet, it's the spirit that quickens. Okay, so either either money, the devil will come at God's people through money to touch God's glory, or what we call the the three the third G is either the girls or the guys. Okay, so we're going to look at the strategy now. So they come they come to Balaam with the rewards of divination. Okay, so I want now I want you to stop and think. Uh, remember, if you remember right, remember uh, Joseph had a company but God had this anointing in the multicolored robe. But his brethren, his brethren were very jealous of him. Uh -huh. yeah. So his brethren threw him in a pit. Yeah. And then the brethren sold him for money. Yeah. Okay, sold him out. Brethren sold him out for money. Okay, so now here they are, is that they're coming after, they're coming after, uh, they're, they're seeking Balaam to come and curse God's people. And so they're offering Balaam money. To curse God's people. Now, uh, if I remember right, there was a guy in the New Testament by the name of Judas. <laughs> and they were looking for someone to betray Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. So, yeah. They were talking about the three G's. Now remember that. Because, uh, let me just talk to you young ones. You, you, you're saved. You're, you're fire baptized. you you got patience. you got a call of God upon. Uh, there's a journey's long. Oh, yeah. The journey's long, and there be there be some strategies, there be some temptation, there be some three G's come along. Yeah. And, uh, if you ever been water skiing, everything is the water's down there is smooth and like a mirror. And there's, there's some troubled waters up there. And, uh, now, if if remember that remember that guy we just talked about this recently. Remember remember the. Oh God! With that anointing, and he killed a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey, and and he killed thirty men at one time. And uh, a guy by the name of Samson, mm. oh, yeah. and the Philistine rubs. How can every time we mess with this guy, this guy defeats us? <laughs> so then they come up with a strategy, yeah. and they find a fine-looking honey, one yeah. of the three G's. Yeah. They find a girl, yeah. and they offer the girl money. Money. Yeah. Money. Everywhere. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now let me talk to the men here just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I'm not trying to be carnal, I'm just say this in my I think you remember this, okay? They had fine looking honey, and I'm telling you, let me talk to the men. The devil is really thinks so little of us. The devil thinks so little of us that just show somebody up with a got a big ones and hang out. And then our eyes are boy, 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 and we're willing to go to hell, give up blood and, and our inheritance because somebody comes along, looks real good, huh? You act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You're not used to telling Dr. Plain. You're used to religion. We know. Come on, say, Dr. God. Well, what an insult. Somebody got the big ones and I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to first, I'm telling you, let me. <laughs> when you got a Rolls, Rolls Royce at home, you don't mess around with little Volkswagen. Amen. Right. Amen. Both of them made What did they offer Delilah? Money. A whole lot of money. Yes. And I'm yes. telling you, the devil will come after you with the three G's. 
Now we're going to look, we're going to look at how, we're going to look at the temptation. Okay, here comes God people to enter into the inheritance. And we're going to see with the powers of darkness, the strategy, the hell itself, come up. And what we're going to see was any of the three G's involved that try to, to, to uh, the curse God people. Now, okay, so verse 7. The elders of, of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the, with the rewards of divination. Now that, that word there, divination, means witchcraft or the oracles. Basically, what we're talking about is demonic, satanic prophecies. Okay, we're talking about the, we're talking about someone speaking under inspiration, not of the Holy Spirit, but of the devil. And we have to understand that. Okay, and it's not always, not always either God or the devil that some people's flesh just get in there, and, and so there's so what we call soulless realm. But that's another message. Okay, they they send these people to Balaam with, with the rewards of divination in the hand. And they came to Balaam, and they spoke unto him the words of Balak. And he said to them, verse 8, Launch here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord will speak unto me, the princes of Moab abode, abode with, with Balaam. So here they come to Balaam, and Balaam says, Stay here tonight. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Yeah. The demonized people was up. <laughs> and verse nine, and God came. This here's a strange. This why a lot of, there's a lot of people call this a strange case of Balaam, the self-willed prophet. Verse nine, and God came to Balaam and said, "What man of these with you? Uh, is God watching who we hang out with? Yeah. What, kind of, what kind of people are you hanging out with? That's right. And Balaam said to God. Good Balaam said to God, Balak the son of Zephor, the king of Moab, has sent them to me, saying, Behold, there's a people that come out of Egypt which cover the face of the I mean, did God know about those people? Yeah. Yes. God, God's the one that brought them out. So he tried to think, well, I'm giving you some unknown information because there's some people over here. And here God been working but preparing those people for hundreds of years. Okay, uh, so he said, Behold, there's a people come out of Egypt which cover the face of the earth now. Come now. They're telling me they want me to come and curse them for adventure I, that I shall be able to overcome them and I'm going to drive them out. God. Wow. God said to Balaam, thou shalt not go with them. God said to Balaam, thou shalt not go. Mm -hmm. wow. You ever had somebody come and invite you to go somewhere and do something and God said, no. thou shalt not? No. no. Now, there's a whole lot of issues in this right here. We can talk for a long time about that. We're going to really talk about a lot about the self idolatry, the self will, the independence. Of what we're going to talk about stubbornness, which in me was extremely, extremely strong. Yeah. I can really relate to this stuff. Okay, okay. Now, so that God said to Balaam, "Thou shalt not go." Is that clear? Is there anything about no? We we don't understand. <laughs> thou shalt not go with him, and thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Amen. Who blessed them? Right. Whose idea was right. it to bring them out? Right. Who did God choose to be His own people? Israel. The people that were in bondage and in slavery for yes. 400 years. Yes. God has strange way yes. of preparing the people to Amen. be strong. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, hang on, because this is this is very powerful. We, the important thing about this is, we don't look here and think back all these hundreds of years ago. We got to bring this in the now. Yes. Well, how how does this? How does it fit my shoes in my walk right now? Yeah, yeah. How, does, how does this to be in my life? God said to Balaam, Thou shalt not go. Thou shalt not curse thee, people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said to the prince of the Balak, Get ye back, back to your land, for, for God, the Lord, has refused to give me leave with you. They came in, Well, we well, want you to come curse these people. And, and, and Balaam prays, and, and God said, No, thou shalt not go, thee shalt not curse them, because they're blessed. So Balaam, Balaam goes to tell them, I can't go with you. <coughs> Verse 14, the princes of Moab wrote, Have you ever, uh, ever had a temptation come? <laughs> and the first thought was that, you know, there's no big deal. Uh -uh. Nope. Because you're submitted to God, resist the devil, and he flee. And so, because you are submitted to God, the temptation came, nope. Yes. <coughs> but then sometimes the devil regroups. Yes. <laughs> sometimes they... The devil will up the ante. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, ever, you ever been in church and, and my God, you, the light is so strong and the anointing is so strong and you got visions for your life and while you're in here, so we, I'll never do it again. Yeah. Yes. 
Amen. Within 48 hours, we forgot yes. the light in here. And then the temptation came in here, and it was so easy to reject it. But out there, what did you say? <laughs> that is true. Amen. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> and so if you begin to ponder upon that thought, until it begins to develop a desire within you, and you begin to entertain it within your heart and in your mind. See, this, this you got to see this as preparation for God, what, what God yes. wants to do. I'm telling you, we cannot live dirty and approach a holy God and experience revival. Amen. Come on, say so, God. There's got to be a cleansing and a purging. I got to deal with this. I don't know about you. I got to deal with some stuff to get myself in position. We got to decide whether we want this or not. So, uh, we will be given an opportunity tonight to either reject freedom or get some freedom. Amen. Amen. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as they did the day that provoked God to anger departed from the living God because Amen. of the deceitfulness <laughs> of sin. Yes. You're going to see that Balaam here begin to lie to himself. He began to listen because the devil himself began to up the ante. Yes. Mm. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Somebody text you and delete. And then the text comes. Delete. Yeah. And uh, a few more words in there, and more enticing. Uh, <laughs> Sweet nothing to begin to say. Oh, Lord. Maybe they said, no, no, no. I, I, I pray God said no. Did God say no? Yes. He said no. Yes. He said, there shall not. Yes. He said no. He said, you shall not curse people. Yes. Because I bless them. Amen. 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 And then verse 14, the princes of Moab rose up and they went back to Balak and, and, and said, Balaam, Balaam has refused to come with us. <laughs> and Balaam said yet again, princes more and more honorable to Balaam. He sends him bigger demons. <laughs> he was more influence. <laughs> if he, he, <laughs> you think the first one had something, when we see, <laughs> we see the next way to come. <laughs> and so Balak said he ups the ante and so he says people with more influence more power more authority they're trying to seduce don't think the devil is going to say to you one time forsake him right. yeah. no he'll he, he talk to you more than once yeah. verse 16 they came to Balak and uh, so now they get they get more authority. They get more power. They're more honorable. They they got a bigger title. They got a bigger position. They and they came to Balaam again, and said to him, "Thus saith Balak, the son of Zippor, let nothing I pray thee hinder you from coming to me, for I will promote you." Wow. The devil. What do you remember? What the devil said to Jesus in Luke chapter four? Round out the worship me, and I'll give you all the kingdoms. Yes. What a lie from hell. Come on, Satan of God. You ever had the devil just lie to you? Yeah. See, the devil is a liar. Jesus is the truth. Amen. Yes. And so, so basically, what we're talking about is that every one of them, we've got to understand what God has said before, every one of it, that death and life, truth, life, that you may live it, that you you and your seed may live and may multiply, that you may go in, that you may possess the land. What we don't want to do is come to church and hear about what we could have and never get it. Amen. 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 Yep. That was one of the prophetic words. Uh, I had I had a I don't go mention name, but I had a preacher. I I really loved I really loved this man, and uh, I followed this ministry. And one decade goes by, two decades go by, and he came. He kept happening. He said the sick are going to be healed. I'm thinking they're already being healed. The captive are going to be set free. I'm thinking they're already getting set free. We got to get away from the futuristic gospel. Amen. And yes. this is a now God. Yes. And I'm telling you, hell, here, here God's people are at the brink of the breakthrough, and hell itself is trying to destroy them yes. and find way to curse yes. them. And I'm telling you, hell trying to curse you. Yes. Yes. Come on, yes. God. Yes. You get the closer you get to your breakthrough, the closer yes. you get to the breakthrough, yes. you level yes. your devil. Yes. Hell yes. trying to get you. Yes. And then once you get your breakthrough, Amen. the devil is full of hate, and he hates God. Who is love? The devil doesn't want you to love. 
The devil dealt with you to be free to love God, love people. Amen. Okay, so here he is. So there's a seducing. So the, he ups the ante and he comes out there and he says in verse 17, I'll promote you. Balaam is saying, I'll promote you. Uh, you're going to, you and I will be given the choice. Do we want the kings and princes of this world to promote us or do we want God to promote us? God. Who are you going to put your faith in? Man or God? God. 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 Put your trust in man. But blessed is the man. Put your trust in God. So here's what the enemy is searching for. He's searching for any area that we're vulnerable in. Yes. And just because, just because Balaam said no the first time, the devil didn't say, well, I'm going to leave him alone for the rest of his life. He regrouped, he came back, and up the ante. Yeah. New level, new devil. The devil will come at if you say no the first time. Don't think the devil gonna leave you alone. Oh. He just regroup and come at you. A devil yes. angle. Yes. What is he looking for? Yes. An area that you're weak in. Yes. yes. Amen. That's true. Yeah. That it's a whole lot bigger than the three G's. Yes. Um. <laughs> okay. Verse 17, 12, I'll promote you to very great honor, and I'll do what's it. See, do you see what this is saying right here? I will, I'll give you glory. I'll give you honor. I'll give you title. I'll give you position. I'll give you recognition with men. Yeah, here we are. I will give you money. I'll give you money, and I'll give you I'll, I will, I'll give you honor and glory. Now, what well, I'm saying, God can do that. Amen. That's what I'm saying. God can do that. And uh we go on here and we'll say, okay. I'll give you very great honor and I will do whatever you say to me. Come now, therefore, I pray. Come and curse these people. Verse 18, And Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak. Now, isn't that, isn't that strange? Now, the way he kind of, Balaam not going to bring him money. They came with one Realm of money. Now they come with a bigger amount of money, and listen how Balaam just kind of brings it up again. You now uh, listen how he how he puts this and said, uh, "Well, you know, if Balaam would give me his house full of silver gold, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you brought me one amount of money. You brought me more." Uh, so he's beginning to think because now the mouth comes the abundance of the. He talk about money because he's thinking about money. There's something going on in his heart, okay? And, it, and it's, it's not holiness. Okay? So he said, if Balaam would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot... That's very important that you understand what he said right here. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or do more. Now, here's where many people get in trouble. God has said, Thou shalt not. And people try to figure a way, how can I? Amen. What is it about no that we don't understand? Right. What is it about plea fornication that we don't understand? Uh -huh. Amen. Mm. Just a couple clear throats yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> See, what, what is happening is that the enemy has tried to seduce little by little the enemy keep coming. He come this way, come this way, come this way, come this way. Now, oh, Peter, if Peter would give me all the silver gold, his house full of, I can't go beyond the word of the Lord to do less or more. Now listen to what he said, the very next words, the very next verse. Now therefore, I pray thee, tarry ye this night that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. Well, did God already talk? Yes. Did God already say it? Yes. Did God already say, Thou shalt not go with these people? Yes. Did God already say that you shall not you shall not curse these people because yes. I bless them? Yes. Okay, now, he's trying to find a way, see, because now there's something within his heart. The enemy, the powers of darkness, has searched him out and saw a weakness, an area that he's venerable in. Yes. Come on, say to God. Yes. So now, Balaam is trying to find a way. How can I? I God said, a, B, C, but how can I maneuver X, Y, Z? Anybody beside me ever tried to manipulate God? Yes. Have anybody beside me ever had a clear word from God? Yes. Yeah. But there was something in me that wanted. Yes. 
One clearing your throat again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. Amen. Them, God. Yes, Amen. it's true. Hear what I'm saying. Yes. I'm saying a little bit. We'll go be, everybody here will be given an opportunity to get rid of some stuff that make you vulnerable on your journey. Because yes. I'm telling you, there will be days. There will be rainy, stormy, ten day day. Yes. Yes. There will be the, the devil, the adversary himself will come after your soul to steal, to kill, to destroy. That doesn't yes. make you confession. That's scripture. Amen. The thief will come. Yes. You don't have to invite him. He'll yes. search you out. Yes. He'll knock on your door. Yes. He'll call you up. He'll email you. He'll text you. Yes. He'll call. Come on, say, That's true. That's true. Yes. He'll find you. Yes. He's trying to find a weekend. Yes. He's trying to find yes. an area yes. you are vulnerable in. Yes. And it what they be vulnerable may not make you vulnerable, but the vice versa. Amen. But the yes. enemy is searching. If this were so easy, how come so few few people are really entering in to the fullness of what God really has? I don't know about you, but I don't want to sit for the crumbs of the table. And we're going to do this. Let's just go all the way to God. Let's shut up. Let's start. Let's die to self and get resurrected. Let's get the fullness of evil to God. Amen. I don't want dead boy. I want. I don't want dead boy in church services. Preach and prophesy the faith right up the wall. Come on, King of God. Somebody give God some praise. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Good play. So they come back again and they hit the enemy. So again, Balaam says, "Go, go, go, go home. Stay, stay here tonight. I'm gonna try to figure a way." <laughs> How can I make this happen? One thing to God. You cannot drink the cup along the cup of devil. A whole lot of people believe that they can, but they cannot. Because God said they can. Hear ye this night, that I may know what the Lord will say more. Verse 20, and God. This what surprises some people. And God came to Balaam that night. And God said to Balaam. Now, a lot of people misinterpret this. I use the King James Bible. Here's what God God came to Balaam and said, If the men if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them, and yet the word that I shall say to thee, thou shalt that shalt thou do. Now, very important because some people miss it with that, they misinterpret that. God said to Balaam, if the men come to you and they call you, but they didn't come. They didn't come and they didn't call. And verse 21, Balaam rose up in the morning and settled his donkey and he went with. He went with. They didn't come. Now what I'm telling you, God will bring you to a crossroads. Death in life. Choose life that you and your seed may live and may multiply. And there are people thinking, I'll just go down this path for a little while. Yes. But there's a snare over there, and they get caught, and some people never make it back. Right. And they end up in hell. Okay, so God said, if if they come, if they come to call thee, rise up and go with it, yet they didn't come. They didn't come, they didn't call. And so he made so now he's initiating. He's uh see basically what he began to covet in his heart. He began to ponder this. I believe I can sneak on the other side of the fence and I can do something and I'll get away with it. Right. God would not. Yes. Uh, remember, um, remember when when uh, in Genesis chapter 3 when as, didn't God give Adam and Eve a pretty good deal? Yes. And then who showed up? Yes. The serpent. The devil showed up in the form of a serpent and the serpent said to Adam and Eve, has God said? That's what they're doing right here. That's what they're saying to Balaam. Has God said? Yes. Well, had he? Yes. Did, he? did God say, thou shalt not? Yes. Thou shalt not go with them? Yes. Thou shalt not curse them? But who's going with them? Right. Come on, say. Have you ever, have you ever known the will of God? In the first temptation, I never do it. No, 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 no. I have nothing to do with that. And you went home and you laid upon the bed. And you thought. I'm waiting on you. I'm in something for a while. Begin to entertain it. Next thing you know, you're going with the people that God told you not to go with. 
Balaam rose up in the morning and said to the donkey and went with the princes of Moab. Uh, Psalms 106 verse 15 said they lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and God gave them the request but sent leanness into their soul. Yeah. Be careful demanding your own way. You just might get it. Yes. Yes. Proverbs 1, chapter 1 verses 30 and 31 said they despised, God said they despised my reproof and now they will eat the fruit of having their own way. Yeah. Now basically what you, Samson eats a bit of fruit. Yes. Come on, saints of God. Yeah. He had to eat some bit. He got his own way. But he had to eat some bit of fruit. We're going to see what kind of fruit Balaam will eat eventually here. Okay, now, so this is how you know that God didn't tell them. So many people misinterpret that if they come after they call it you, if they come after you, you can go with them. But they did come and they did call. Verse 22, and God's anger was kindled. God was angry because he went. Now, he's going somewhere he's not supposed to go. He's going somewhere that God told thou shalt not, you shall not curse them. But a temptation came and began to ponder it. Time went by. He began, to, he began to think upon it. He began to desire it. He began to entertain it within his heart. The next thing you know, because he's entertaining it within his heart, now he's doing it. Right. Now God's angry. The angel of God was kindled. Let me just say this. I don't want you to feel like I'm talking down to you because I'm telling you, I have ticked God off very well myself. Amen. I have heard the snack crackle and pop yes. of the anger of God killing me against me. I'm not talking down to you. Amen. Come on, thank you, God. Right. I, I, know what it's, I, I know what it's very like to be to be dealt with by God, Pastor Jane. I call it being dealt with by God. Yeah. For self-idolatry, self-will, independent spirit, extreme yeah. stubbornness, yeah. I know what it's like to be dealt with by God. Mm. Amen. How to deal with you with love. Yes. yes. Yeah. So God now God is now going to deal. And don't think that God doesn't have a humor. I said the humor. So God now going, the anger of God is kindled against Balaam. Balaam's going for God told him, Thou shalt not. Mm -hmm. Do not go with them, and he's going with them. So the anger of God kindled against them. God stands against them. The angel of God comes and blocks the way. Balaam is on the donkey. King James words a little otherwise. Yes. <laughs> yes. God begins to block Balaam's way. The angel of God is standing in the way. Yes. Have you ever, you ever, uh, you ever been tempted and you no, I, I, I never, I never do that. But, but time went by and, and, and wore, wore you down. There was something <coughs> way down within you that you didn't even realize within you. Next thing you know, you're going somewhere. You're not supposed to go. You're with people you're not supposed to be with. And the anger God kindled with. And here's how God did with you. He begins to block your plan. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. begins to block your plan yeah. that you to destroy yourself. Yeah. 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 Jesus. Yes. Thank you. God only chastises them that he loves. Yes. But see, when you're self will self-idolatry, and you're demanding to have your own way, the devil's going to try to get you to get real angry at God. The truth is, the devil's not blocking the way. God blocking the way. Yes. Mm. So good. Nice. That's very true. That's yeah. very yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. Verse 22, God's anger was kindled because Balaam went, and the angel of God stood in the way, as an adversary against Balaam. Yeah. Let me let me just let me just say this that you and I are better off with every man and woman on earth as our enemy than God being our opponent. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Have you ever gone on the will of God and everything went wrong? Yes. I mean everything. Yes. <coughs> All day long, every day, until Yes. <laughs> Amen. If you've ever, if you've ever once been right, and then you go very wrong, God withdraws His presence. Yes. I'm telling you, you are all, you are of yes. all people most miserable. That's yes. right. More miserable than someone just an outright heathen. If you've ever been a heathen, and you got saved, and the presence of God was real to you, and then you walk away from the love of God, the presence of God, and you're out of the will of God, after you've been the will of God, you know the goodness of God, and then you become extremely miserable. Yes, very much. Amen. So God in His love 
says, Boy, I'm going to deal with you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I'm going to put an angel in the way. Amen. You're on your little donkey. Operating in your own self will, you are your own God. Yeah. You got a strategy. Mm -hmm. You got seduced. Yeah. <clears throat> but you can't exhaust my love. Amen. Wow. So I'm going to help you, Balaam. Because you now become blind and you cannot see. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. Sin has a blinding. Yes. Yes. Very much. In Luke 4, 18, when Jesus said, The Spirit of God upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, the opening of the prison to them, the, yeah. the recovery of the sight to them, they're blind. Yeah. That word blind, there is that total natural blindness to me, so, to me so blind, Amen. where we yes. are blinded by pride and by arrogance. Yes. God resists the proud. He's yes. now resisting Amen. Balaam. Yes. Yeah. By an angel standing in the way that he wants to go. Yes. And the donkey looks and sees the angel and stops. But Balaam, who's now blinded by pride, cannot see the angel. Yes. Wow. Mm. Yes. True. Thank God for the Let me just say this. That it's not a good day when an animal has more discernment than us. Amen. That's right. That's true. Not a good day. Amen. Something wrong somewhere. Yeah. Something wrong somewhere. I know. <laughs> Uh, at the end of verse 20, uh, he was riding upon the donkey, and the two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, his sword drawn in his hand, and the donkey turned aside out of the way and went to the field. And Balaam began to beat up on the donkey. Yes. To turn him away. If God has to, he'll put a jackass in your life. Yes. <laughs> to deal with you, you get better than the jackass. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. But the jackass is anointed of God to yes. keep us from shooting ourselves in the foot. Because the love of God is going to stop him from harming God people. Hell got a strategy against you, and God working for you. Amen. 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 God is protecting His people, Israel, yeah. and Balaam's on the way to curse him, and the Spirit of God is sending angels to protect them. Yeah. Come on, somebody on need to give God the praise. Yeah. You've got to see that when we get right with God, God's going to have angels protect you. Yes, yes. Jesus, yes. Glory. Yes, man. Oh, Verse 24, the angel of the Lord stood the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, a wall on that side, and when the, when the donkey saw... Well, the, when the donkey saw what Balaam did see, yes. see, Don't if you got your eyes upon something that you're not supposed to have, yeah. going somewhere you're not supposed to go, yeah. and something blocks you, you got your eyes set upon some kind of false goal, you can't see that this yeah. is God opposing you, saving yeah. you from yourself. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That is real. True. Yeah. Yes. yes. But Balaam can't yet see it. While we are just, I, I double dog dare you. Those to the top of this shelf over here to the top, all the way to the closest to the door over there. There's two books: of spiritual man and the release of the spirit. I double dog dare you. If you not read them, get them and devour them, and don't give them away. Don't roll them out because you need them to throw them down the trail. Because self idolatry. Self will and independent spirit and great big stubbornness. That's true. <laughs> will play possum, but won't die. Yes. That's true. Yeah. Will play possum. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. You're going to need to go. I've had to go back 50 yes. times. Yes. 150 times. Yes. And read part of that book. Yeah. I've written part of it out by hand. Okay, so here, once again, the donkey thrust herself to the wall and crushed Balaam's foot, verse 25, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he's beaten, he's beaten up with the donkey again. <laughs> Poor donkey. No, I know. <laughs> How are we treating people that God using to deal with our life with? Amen. Right. Saul didn't get a real good grade when he stand with the prophet. No. He told him the truth about himself. Yes. 
be real careful, see, because I, I didn't learn this the easy way, I learned this the hard way. Be real careful coming to church. I'm not to tell people the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will backfire if you won't receive truth for yourself. That's true. Yes. 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 Praise God. Yes. And you cost yourself not trouble, but double trouble. Yes. yes. I'm talking from experience. Yes. 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 I understand Jesus. Jonah, the slow to learn prophet. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I did there, I'm just not the quickest on the draw. Yes. <laughs> Verse 26, And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place. After all this going on, Balaam is still demanding to have his own way. How long will we demand to have our own way Amen. that we know that God has said, That shall not! Yes. One of the main reasons of uh, when we talk about how to be to the promised land by divine design, the desert is between Egypt and the Promised Land. Yes. This is uh, the desert is where God deals with the inward man. Yes. Um, I understand stubbornness and the self-will, self-idolatry, independent spirit, stubbornness was constantly operating through me. And things were not going well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure it's because the devil is opposing me right. because I got a calling on. <laughs> <laughs> but God says he resists the proud. Yes. 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 Now what I'm telling you, this right here, I'm telling you that there were things in my life I could not see. So I, I make so many wrong choices. I begin to read this stuff up there. I begin to, to, uh, to realize I am making so many wrong choices. I ran out of people to blame. People got sick and tired of hearing my story. I'm a victim. So I begin to look in the mirror. Sure. Amen, Lord. Now here's what I'm telling you. This is how seductive the devil can be. I make a whole bunch of series of wrong choices. And the one and only time in my life that I quit the ministry. There's a Johnny Paycheck song that says, take this job and shove it. And I told God, you could take this call and you could... Didn't backslide, didn't smoke a cigarette, didn't drink a beer, didn't get high, didn't have sex with anybody, didn't rebel, didn't fall out of church. I just didn't want hurt anymore. Yeah. I didn't want hurt anymore. So there was a minister's convention. So I didn't, I, I didn't want to be a minister, but I didn't have anything else to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I didn't want to backslide. So I go to the minister's convention. I'm saying, that I had self idolatry, self will, independent spirits, great amount of stubbornness. And I go in, and I now here's a true sign that I'm lukewarm. I go in, and I'm sitting on the back row. Yes. Because I was always a front row man. I was the first to come to church, the last to leave, and sit on the front row. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm the last to come in, I'm sitting on the back row, I don't want anybody to mess with me. Right. Because I'm not right. So the very first night, the prophetess of God, and I knew she she preached a three-day convention, day and night, and she always would she'd always take one book of the Bible and preach it the whole convention. And we're going great depth of just being so powerful. Amen. So the first night, I'm talking about blindness. <coughs> I'm saying that Balaam cannot see. I'm saying that one or two of us can be here tonight have things in life we cannot Amen. see. Amen. Here's what happened. I'm going to the minister convention the first night. The prophetess of God gets up and preaches on Jonah. And my thought was, you know, there's somebody here on the will of God. <laughs> <laughs> and that clueless me. That was one of them. I'm telling you, I could not see. I didn't want to hurt anymore. Because I didn't know how to deal with the pain. Because I had not yet dealt with my rejection. Right. I had not dealt with my fear. Neither I wanted to of you. Yeah, that's right. 
right. if you don't deal with it. Yeah. Yes. So I told God, you could take this call and you could. <coughs> she put this on Jonah, and my thought is somebody here out of the will of God. Didn't have a clue. I was one of them. So the next service, the next morning, to help me out, she calls me out. Amen. In front of everybody, all the ministers I knew. Oh, there's a stubbornness within me. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. Yes. Well, number one, I walked in with no vision for ministry. I told God, you could take this call and you could. No. And that went on for a while. <coughs> and I walked out. I walked in with no vision. I walked out with vision. I walked in barren. And I walked out with a fire of God burning in my Praise heart. Praise God. Amen. Again. Thank you, Lord. I'll say it another way. I walked into that service totally blind to the massive amount of stubbornness within me. Amen. But when the prophets of God prophesied, I walked out with homework. Yeah. God had given me a word, and in the word there was an assignment. Oh, you are stubborn. Oh. <clears throat> my stubbornness was getting in my way. Samson's stubbornness was getting in his way. Balaam's stubbornness is getting in his way. And one or two of your stubbornness is getting in Always. Always. <laughs> That's true. And when I'm saying if we're in a season of deliverance, when it comes to deliverance time, I would invite you, you better deal with your stuff. Don't set a world record running out that door. Amen. Hey, That's true. Help us, God. Deliver us. Amen. Yes. Saints. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You have to deal with it sooner. Yes. Later. Yes. Amen. Or later. No matter what lie, no matter how they justify, no yes. matter what kind of excuse, you can't escape. Oh God, I tried. Yes, God. yes, that's true. So did they the all of those people. Yes. So the angel of God again, verse 26, the angel of the Lord went further stood than the narrow place, where there's no way to go to, to the right hand to let them win. And when the donkey, when the donkey saw the angel of God, the donkey falls down. The donkey falls down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger is kindled, and he's beating up the donkey again with his staff. Yes. Wow. <laughs> sure sign. Anger. Someone not right with God. Yeah. Me mouthing. Yes. Everybody right. <coughs> That's so yeah. That's true. That's, That's true. true. It's true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Boy, I, I'm so saved. I'll never. <laughs> <laughs> that was just itching. 